Um, Anna was telling us, Bobby, about uh, expanding rapidly, uh, taking on a team of 10. And it's as though the government is working against her when it comes to employing people. I think you know a little bit about this, don't you? Yep. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. It's a disaster, to be honest with you. I don't envy you with 10 employees. You know, actually in Holland, they have a saying, if you want to wish ill on someone, you wish the many employees. Is that right? Honest to God. Okay, I, I have heard it in America. I mean, Bob Wang has shared a story here of somebody who was, uh, I think, retained in a vehicle repair shop who was incompetent, which is a, a danger to, to public health, of course. Uh, mm. But I have heard of it referred to in, in America as daycare, basically, employing people as well. It's, it's, it's not for the faint-hearted, is it? No, um, I caught earlier on, I was actually in physiotherapy, but I caught earlier on your conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, 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 she's, she's hit the, the nail on the head. Um, you're not incentivized to hire anybody. Uh, and everyone writes a CV that is very, very, nice and it shows all the good parts etc because they obviously want to get a job but um i would say nine times out of ten the cv doesn't reflect reality of somebody when they fit into a new position and you're oh, left yeah. to deal with and try and retrain and rehelp and sort of encourage and and, and again, you only I have 30 days and it's an experimental period where you can terminate a contract without repercussions oh well i've even had repercussions within 30 days so mm -hmm. Wow. um yeah 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 and um i sort of uh, no joking but it, it, in some cases i've had employees come up and please fire me because i now i'm able to get the uh, unemployment assistance and if you fire me and then i can do a green receipt with my wife or whatever it is um and it's become a cultural thing here sort of like getting the the social security and doing a green receipt uh once you're qualified for it it's it's a cultural thing it's yeah, a, it's yeah. A, those people that kind of feel like they put more effort into not working than they put into actually working, they are really frustrating. I must tell you, I'm actually not been that unlucky. Uh, so far, I've been, of course, there's people that didn't fit and went and went in good terms. And uh, so far, there is only three people that I had that I didn't finish in good terms. But I don't think that's such a bad rate, given that I, I have 10 job posts and these are people that were mostly already replaced. So um, I feel often that the soft skills are more important to me than the actual curriculum. Like I will look at the curriculum, but the actual interview ends up being more important for me. And if they end up being very different from what they present, uh, well, that's a big problem. But thankfully, that hasn't happened a lot. That only happened like them being very different from what they presented only happened twice. <laughs> it's bad enough, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, that becomes a job in itself, doesn't it? Working with that problem. And, and that's apart from the job you're trying to do, which in your case, Anna, helping people move to Portugal, Bobby, you know, helping people invest in Portugal. Um, you want to be getting on with that, don't you? And this is the backstory. This is the unfortunate backstory of what you're dealing with while you're trying to do something. And, of this and it makes a great impact in the company. Like for me, it's extremely important to have a very good customer service. Like that's the, the core of my company. I want to provide a stellar pro service. Mm. And um, that damages the company when someone is not performing. Yeah. I think, Bobby, you were going to add something to that. No, well, I... I... I would have had over a hundred employees at one stage, and um, uh, I now have one. Me. <laughs> That's so true. That is drastic, isn't it? And a reflection of exactly what we're talking about here. What a loss that is to the country. The fact that you could be um, offering a hundred jobs, which is a significant impact, isn't it, in a society? And you've decided not to because it's so darn difficult. No, I still have people who work with me and for me, but but via green receipt because yeah. it's. It's the safest form of, of number one, that they, they know that their job, they need to perform to, to keep their job, which is one thing. And of course, I'm not that kind of guy that someone's sick or whatever it is that, okay, I'm sorry, you're out or I'm not paying you this. They still have the same conditions. Actually, they have better conditions now mm -hmm. uh, than they had when they were with me, when they were working under uh, contracts. But it cost me a fortune to get them out of the contracts, first of all. You have yeah. to pay everybody compensation. But this is a political thing, to be honest with you. And it's an historical socialist uh, mindset and it's ingrained in in the portuguese in the portuguese because you have two different types of employees now so you have the portuguese employees who basically 
I want a contract, I want a contract, I want a contract, I want security, I need to have X amount a month um, so I can work for you. And even if it's a salesperson who's depending on sales, etc., I want this, I want a contract, I want a month, I don't do that anymore. So from now on, what I do is I, I have salespeople who work for me, but they're, they're working on, um, on commission basis and I'll prepay commissions in advance with regards to uh, having them a monthly fee, but it'll be deducted when they do actually sell something. And if they don't, I take it on the head and they're, they're, they have to go find a job that fits them. But I'm not going to, to support uh, people who don't are not able to support themselves. And mm -hmm. um, um, also then you have the other side of it where you've got, i have now looking for social media people and, and um, tech people uh, because I'm, I'm going back into international investment market. And they all want to work from home. One might come to, I, I want to come to the office once a month. And not for me. <laughs> Forget it. Yes. Yeah. This and, is an and, and, time for that, isn't it? Because the pandemic obviously made a, a, a very big cultural change in the workplace. Um, and, and people have got used to that by the sound of it. Yeah, you know, that, that to me is, I don't want to work for you all the time. And I want to work for multiple companies, work from home. And it's fine if they can get ahead and do it. But yeah. I want someone who's who can come to the office at least three times a week because I want to sit and see what they're doing, and yeah. then basically have that kind of office interaction and that brainstorming and that um, camaraderie that you have by being together. I think by having somebody who sits at home and works an hour a day on a computer is that's and and, get, and looks for a full time salary. By the way, uh, it's not for me. It's uh, maybe old school or whatever you want to call it, but um, uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for me anyway. I wouldn't do it. Fascinating, fascinating stuff. What do you I think, actually Alan? have my my back office people working fully digitally with no office. And I think it depends on the people. Like I have some employees that are absolutely stellar and they'd go above and beyond. And like I've had uh, one <laughs> that didn't. And when that happens, it's a pain. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I have one guy that I... That when he finished with me, I, I got the computer back and he left all these things open and I saw he was working for 10 other companies while he was working for my company while I was paying a full-time salary to him. And he was he all... Wasn't, he wasn't a tech guy, was he? A tech guy did that. Yeah, and he was doing 10... He was doing social media for 10 other companies. Wow. As well. A bit sloppy, a bit sloppy there. My goodness. Uh <laughs> Didn't cover his digital tracks at all uh, when he gave the computer back. Okay, so there are some chances about, I think we should say, shouldn't we, that it's, it's sort of human nature, isn't it, that there are these bad apples that make it difficult for everybody else because they are the exception, I think. Would you agree to the rule? But they, but they, when they do cause trouble, they cause the trouble of 10 other people possibly. Even not just the trouble. Uh, you, you can start a dem against us culture. Depends how big you are. Um, oh, okay. You have you've even had it in such a case where one guy's not happy and he tries to rally the troops like a like a how do you call it a shop steward with regards mm -hmm. to you know your rights we can do this we can do that oh, and really? so, right. okay. yeah 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 so so when you come into business here and depends on the size of your company depends depends on the size of your business get very smart um, advice legal tax uh, employment rights records or uh, rights etc as well. Because um, you can be five years, ten years into it, you have to grow in your company, and then all of a sudden you can be held ransom. So you need to be very, very, I was held ransom, and you have to be very, very careful on how you handle uh, employees from the start to finish. Because you've got no protection. As in a company, you've no protection at all. Actually, zero. It, it, it's written in the sense that basically you're there providing a service for the government, and basically you're working for the government, and you're taking these people, and you're paying their taxes, and you're paying their social security, etc. and in return, you hope that they're going to do what they're meant to do. And if they don't, there's nothing you can do about it. That's very vulnerable, my there goodness. There is, but it costs a lot of money, it takes a lot of time, and it's a pain because that's just set well, that's up to protect business. incompetent people. That can close the company. Yes. That's, yeah. that can come to a point where it's not worth it, close the company. I, I, it is. I, it is I, definitely. And what a yeah. shame that would be. So the question is then, I mean, folks, you see on the screen here two remarkable people who I think are doing incredible things for, for the country uh, here, starting companies, uh, uh, giving people work. Why, given the scenario you've just described, Bobby, would you do it? Uh, you first. I, I, I wouldn't. Again, I wouldn't do it again. In that, in that format, what I've done now yeah. is that I still have my companies 
but I have them controlled in a sense that I have control. Yes. Even though it cost me more, let's say, um, and the government have this thing. So if you employ somebody and you give them a, a greener seat and you're the majority, because uh, a greener seat is someone that works for themselves, okay? Yes. But yes. if you're the only person that gives them a greener seat, you have to pay something like 5% extra at the end. So the government realized that this is how you're employing somebody and uh, they're taxing you because this is how you're employing them instead of actually giving them contracts. So yes. like, it's for me, I, you know, I was the advice that was given to me very early days was, don't go contracts, go green receipts, go green receipts with everybody. Yeah. And of course, then everybody kept going, I want a contract, I want a contract. And what I found was I was putting people on green receipts and then they were getting offered jobs and contracts and I was losing staff. So then I said, oh, I better uh, put these people on contracts or I could lose them. Yeah. And what I just discovered, the ones who are, det who are determined to go on contracts, and I'm sorry, but they're not worth keeping. Wow. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. So you found, I mean, that is uh, the, the spirit of Bobby O'Reilly, I think, finding a way through this um, because you're determined um, to make it work and you found a way through. But the, you, it's not for the faint hearted at all, is it? Other other people would have crumbled and thought, screw it. I'm not even going to bother with this. Yeah, look, I think you when you're um, an entrepreneur or whatever it is, you focus on 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 trying to create something and you try to create a team that has the same vision or can join into the vision of what you're trying to create. Yeah. And that's what you try to surround yourself with, with, with people who can see that vision and want to be part of it and want to, you know, come along with that journey. And for that, they're, they're well rewarded. Um, what you get on top of that then as well, people who just want the job, which I understand they just want the job because they have their other lives and, and so on and so forth. But um, I, I've, I've become very good at filtering. Um, and basically, I want somebody to understand uh what i want out of them and what i expect out of them and um and i'm no i'm not a slave driver by any sense of the imagination actually i think i'm a very good boss and most of my employees which is probably wrong everyone tells me i'm wrong for this are also <laughs> now friends you know yes. and we yes. party together we go off on holidays together and all this kind of stuff and of course when something goes wrong then that creates another uh, problem if you know what i mean but yeah. that's the kind of person i am is is in it is personal for me. My my relationship with my, let's say, employees is personal. Um, and I, I don't have that arm's length thing. And when you find somebody that is to become very selfish in a sense, well, I know I'm entitled to this business. I had one lady who who left me. And and then after she left me to join a company, three doors down, um, I got this strange letter. And actually, I was after helping this lady. She got caught in another country she went to work for another company she got caught in another uh, in a country where they refused to give her her passport back until she repaid her her um training fee and she couldn't have the money i sent her the money for her training fee so she oh, could fly me. back and give her back her job a year later she left me and then i got this strange letter from uh, i forget the department saying i owed her x amount of money for not training her, given her X amount of training days. And I know oh, wow. it was. Yeah. And apparently you're meant to have, you're meant to train your staff seven days a week or give them, whether it's safety instructions or whatever instructions, I don't know. Anyway, she sued me for it. Oh, man. For the, for, after me bringing her back, giving her job, paying her to get her out, ring me, they don't care. They really don't care. At the end of the day, what I found was that a lot of the people who are looking for contracts at the end of it, they're in it for themselves, get their, their their salary and go home, go to the beach, whatever it is. And that seems to be the culture. So you really have to be very, very careful when, from like what you said, from the um, interview stage right down um, to the trial period and see that it fit. And if they don't, they go. Yeah. I have a very different perspective on that. I am... I agree. I understand where you're coming from, and I definitely agree what you are doing is a lot safer from the business. But I do not think that everyone looking for a contract is lazy. And I can tell you that I have quite a few people on contract. And like I was saying, currently, I have uh, a team of 10, and I'm happy with the majority of my employees, and I wouldn't uh, fire them or... 
uh, change their contracts. But the truth is, I am taking a whole lot more of risk as a company because the way that I am setting up things is that it's my responsibility to get clients and it's their responsibility to give them the best possible service. But that means that if I don't get clients, that I'm fucked <laughs> pretty much. And that's my whoa, problem. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, no, wrong jingle. Um, I need it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, no, but you're 100% correct. But also, you're depending on those people who work for you to make your clients happy and that they do their job and so on. And if they don't do their job properly, you're also the other thing. So yes, the thing is that's that, that's very true. And it makes and, a big and, damage on the company if they don't. But like I was saying, I'm happy with the big majority of my team. And I can understand the need to have a stable uh, income like um, uh, many of the people that work with me they have families they they cannot just have a, a bad month and then not be able to put their children in school and give them their food and so on they need to be have that security this is where we disagree this is where i, I just completely uh, i believe that for someone to have that security all they have to do is do their job that's it if they do the job, they have the security because if they're good at doing the job, you can give them what they call payment in advance based on whatever it is. You can structure it in such a way. But it's the it's when they get and I've noticed the difference when somebody's been on Greener Street to change from Greener Street to contract, how everything changed. Their attitude changed, their um I would just say their work ethic changed, everything changed. And that's my own personal experience. I'm not saying everyone is like that, but mm. I actually believe that um it's the government's fault for creating it's it's a one-sided affair that guy who has a contract with you or whatever it is he can have a job offer tomorrow and because he has a contract i, I had two girls one time from the algarve they were on very high salaries um because i employed them from another company and i gave them high salaries to, to get them to come over they were on big contracts and then they were on on big commissions etc but then what happened was they were on such good salaries and such good contracts that the competition thought these guys must be excellent. So they offered them more money and, and yeah, <laughs> so offered them balance. more money and stuck well, them off, took them off me. And then actually what happened was the last guy found out, well, oops, Bobby must have been duped and thank God that he, I got rid of them <laughs> because they, they weren't as good as I thought they were either. But the problem again is this, is that they can go from, they can leave you tomorrow. Good luck, I'm after finding a better job and you're left in the hole. But you I think that it's also about tomorrow. culture, about uh, hiring people that understand the values of the company and want to contribute to it. They do as soon as they have a contract, and as soon as they don't have, they will. They the attitude. Um, you're all listen. I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm after. I'm here eleven years, and I'm after having loads and loads of people on contracts, and. Lot uh, lots and lovely people. I, honest to God, but when it comes down to it, you as the employer you're the worst one in the world when things go wrong from you and i mean from everyone's on a contract working from you today the day that your company uh, has problems it's your fault and they'll blame you 100 uh, percent because i've been there and you're the the asshole and so on at the end of the day so what I found oh. out <laughs> it's true it's true and, and, yes, and, my, it is, it is. and, and my wife has even said to me because look i've been i've been an entrepreneur for the last 30 years and I've had businesses that I've started and didn't work and so on and so forth. But what I did find as well is that everyone's on your side is when everything is going great. But as soon as things yeah. go wrong. Yeah. It's, it's more of that fault. human nature. We've got to, I, I'm so sad to say this, but we've got to move on. We've got Tom and Michael waiting to speak mm -hmm. to us. I think what we need to do, um, the Englishman, the Irishman and the Portuguese woman definitely need to walk into a bar and have lunch <laughs> and talk more about this, don't we, at some point. Uh, so let's do that. Um,